first portion of the film will demonstrate how to unload the ward container from the transport vehicle using the equipment provided in the shelter loading kit. The second portion of the film will demonstrate how to assemble the ward container after it is unloaded. The ward container is an expandable shelter that functions as a shipping container for an inflatable element. When it is empty, it can be expanded to serve as a utility shelter. A shelter loading kit is provided to unload and load the ward container. The kit is transported by the supply vehicle or any vehicle in the convoy with available space. All of the equipment is packed in two metal chests. Equipment for both the unloading and loading procedures are the front anchor posts, left and right. the rear corner pivot posts, left and right, the grip hoists, left and right, the grip hoist jack handles, the hoist cables, the tailgate roller assembly with locking pin, two tie-down straps, the nylon strap, the metal packing chest, two two-ton power pole cables, the two-ton power pole, and second metal packing chest. A five-man team consisting of a non-commissioned officer and four team members can efficiently unload the container from the transport vehicle. The truck driver must be at the controls during the entire operation. First, lower the tailgate. Two of the team members remove the tied down straps. As two other team members install the tailgate roller assembly. Join the rollers with the roller lock pin. Remove the tie-down straps. The rear corner pivot posts, left and right, are positioned so the pulleys are facing away from the truck bed. The front anchor posts are installed during the loading procedure. They must be securely fastened to the truck bed with the clamps on the post. They are not removed during transport. Install the grip hoists on the front anchor posts. Lock the grip hoist hooks in place. The hoists must be positioned so the fittings for the jack handles are facing to the outside. Release the clutch on the grip hoist before installing the cables. Remove the hoist cables from the reels for insertion in the grip hoists. Extend the cable to its full length. Insert the cables through the grip hoists. As two of the team members install the cables in the grip hoists, two other team members engage the hoist cables in the right and left rear corner post pulleys. The non-commissioned officer in charge assists the team in attaching the nylon strap to the hoist cable. Secure the lock on the cable hook. Engage the hoist clutch. 
Extend the hoist cables to their full length to the front of the vehicle so they are not in the path of the wheels. Attach the jack handles to the grip hoists. The non-commissioned officer in charge coordinates the team's action as they operate the grip hoist in unison on both sides of the truck. The ward container is moved to the rear of the truck bed as the team members operate the hoists. The non-commissioned officer in charge directs the team's action from the truck bed. Move the ward container toward the rear of the truck. When there is a two to three foot space between the container and truck cab, attach one of the two ton power pole cables to the lift tie down rings on the upper right and left of the ward container. Attach the second two-ton power pole cable to the right and left front anchor posts. Hook the two-ton power pole in the rings provided on the two cables. To take up slack on the cables, push the jack button to the up position and operate the two-ton power pole as the other team members operate the grip hoists. The button must be in the down position to move the container out. Operate the two-ton power pole handle five times and stop. The other team members then pump the grip hoist one time. Continue this sequence of action until the balance point is reached. Be sure that the two-ton power pole cables are tight. When the ward container rises from the truck bed, unhook the grip hoist cables from the nylon strap and fasten them securely to the two tow cable fittings on the container. And tighten. The rear pivot posts are removed at this time. Release tension on the two-ton power pole cables. Until the two-ton power pole can be removed. The hoist cables will support the container after the two-ton power pole has been removed. The non-commissioned officer in charge coordinates the action of both grip hoist teams as the ward container is lowered. This action must be done slowly and deliberately with both teams working in unison under the direction of the non-commissioned officer in charge. This action prevents excessive swaying of the end of the container as it is lowered. For this demonstration, the container is empty. Normally, it would contain an inflatable shelter element. As the container nears the ground, the truck driver starts the engine and prepares to assist in the final phase of the unloading operation. The truck should be in first gear, low range, to move out from under the container. At this point, under the direction of the non-commissioned officer in charge, the driver inches the truck forward as the container touches the ground. When fully loaded, the weight of the container will move the truck forward without the motor running. The non-commissioned officer in charge continues to coordinate the action of both hoist teams and the driver as the container is lowered. The team continues to work in unison as the unloading procedure continues. 
the container is carefully lowered over the rollers at the end of the truck bed. The truck is slowly moved forward. as the container is lowered over the tailgate. The team continues to operate the grip hoists until the container rests firmly on the ground. Remove the two-ton power pole cables from the lift tie-down rings. Disconnect the grip hoist cables from the container. Remove the cables from the grip hoists. Coil them on the reels provided for storage. Disconnect all of the loading equipment from the truck bed. This includes the tailgate roller assembly, the grip hoists and jack handles, The front anchor posts, left and right. Lay out all of the equipment before storage to be sure that the kit is complete. Other equipment includes the two-ton power pole and cables, the nylon strap, tie-down straps, and the grip hoist cables. Place all of the loading equipment in the metal containers provided and store the complete kit in the ward container after it has been erected or in another available shelter. Move the transport vehicle away from the container before erecting it. A four-man team will demonstrate how to assemble the container for use. First, lower the leveling jacks on the four corners of the container. Secure the jacks in place by attaching the bolts in the flanges near the jack base to the fittings on the container. Fasten the bolts with the wrench attached to each jack. Use the crescent end of the wrench to attach the bolts. Be sure that they are fastened securely. Engage the ratchet end of the wrench on the fittings on the top of the jacks and level the container. The built-in levels are located on the left front and right rear sides of the container. Two men working in unison at both ends of the container lower the four jacks until the container is supported by the leveling jacks. The container must be positioned as low to the ground as possible and still be level. Working as a team, continue to lower the jacks until the container is level. When the procedure is complete, be sure that all the wrenches are attached in the fittings provided on the jacks. Next, release the latches at both ends of the container and disengage them from the folding roof. Be sure the latches securing the folding floor are fastened before lifting the folding roof. Four men can lift the folding roof to full height with little difficulty. Align the holes in the folding roof support brackets and install the retaining pins at both ends. Disconnect the retaining springs from the folding floor support cables 
after the retaining springs have been disconnected, release the latches and disengage them from the folding floor. The four-man team can easily lower the folding floor. Install the upper fabric enclosure. Engage the bead in the upper fabric in the track in the roof. Slide the fabric the full length of the track until the corner folds extend over each end. Two men are required to engage the fabric at each corner when installing the upper and lower fabric. Engage the beads on the fabric and the track at both ends and slide to mate the fabric with the container. Do not secure the latches joining the container and the upper fabric until the lower fabric has been installed and joined with the zipper. Start the bead of the lower fabric in the track in the folding floor. Slide the fabric the full length of the track until the corners extend over both ends of the floor. Slide the beads on the fabric in the track until both ends are mated with the container. Join the upper and lower fabrics with the zipper attachment. Start from the right front corner, zipping from right to left. A two-man team can do this procedure quickly and efficiently. One of the team members precedes the man joining the fabrics and facilitates zipping by folding the protective weather seal on the upper fabric away from the path of the zipper. Continue the action until closure is complete. Be sure that the upper fabric weather seal is properly closed. Press the fabric fastener tape in place to seal the zippered area. After this procedure is completed, secure the upper and lower fabric enclosures to the container with the latches at both ends of the container. This is the ward container after the upper and lower fabric enclosures have been installed, before the corner posts have been positioned. The ward container has two removable panels and one door panel. These panels are interchangeable and can be relocated to any one of these three positions. After installation of the fabric enclosures is complete, Install the corner posts at each corner. And secure them to the folding floor and the folding roof. Secure them by positioning the overlapping flaps on each inner corner of the upper and lower fabric and lock them in place with the fasteners provided. Both corner posts are installed in the same manner. The ward container has an anti-backdraft valve located in the lower left of the door of the container. 
When it is assembled, the ward container provides an environment-controlled shelter. Its use will depend on the requirements of the hospital it serves. Part two will demonstrate the proper procedures for disassembly and loading the container for transport.